biology students. Welcome back. Welcome to lesson 3.2 of population ecology here in biology B. This lesson is all about human impacts on the environment and some tips on how to remember those impacts. My name is Ms. Wilson and I am a teacher at Roosevelt High School here in Seattle Public Schools. You might remember me from lesson one, initial ideas. I am also a teacher of biology as well as AP environmental science. So I'm really excited to share this lesson with you. This is a lot of what we talk about in AP environmental science is the impacts that humans have on the environment and how we can minimize them and how we can protect our natural ecosystems. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and pop my video over here to the side. You'll always be able to see me up here, but I really want you to be able to focus on the PowerPoint slides. You might recognize this first slide. It is at the beginning of every single PowerPoint lesson in this unit. I went over it in detail in lesson one, initial ideas. Feel free to pop back and review that lesson um, if you wanna hear me talk about it, or pause the video here and review it yourself. Key point, just make sure that you're being flexible with yourself and know that your teachers are gonna be flexible with you too. We're all new to this distance learning thing. And we really miss you, by the way. We wish we could be doing these lessons in person, but please know that we are here for you and available to answer your questions. Okay, let's get into the lesson itself. This is lesson 3.2, how, how Have Humans Impacted the Orca Environment? You are gonna be taking some notes about the impacts that humans have on the environment. And the discussion portion is really making that connection to the orca whales and our driving questions for this unit. Your goals. After reviewing this PowerPoint, you should be able to, number one, identify a variety of impacts that humans have on ecosystems using the acronym HIPCO. So this is an acronym that we'll talk more about, but it stands for each of those aspects, each of those impacts that humans have on the environment. Number two, describe how several of those impacts directly affect species such as orca whales. And number three, describe how human impacts on ecosystems can result in the extinction of species. Let's get into those human impacts on the environment. So to summarize, those human impacts on the environment can be remembered using the acronym HIPCO. So an acronym is a way of remembering things where each letter is standing for one of those impacts on the environment. So for example, the H stands for habitat destruction. Now, each of these impacts are going to work together to affect ecosystems and the species that live in those ecosystems. So in fact, there are things that we call influencers. So that's like human population growth or the increased consumption, meaning how much stuff are humans using. And these affect some of these drivers of impacts on the environment, like loss of habitat or pollution. We're gonna talk a whole lot more about these, but the big idea here is that all of these drivers work together to impact biodiversity loss. And biodiversity, we'll define that a little bit more, but it's just the variety of life. It's the variety of ecosystems, of species, and we're losing some of that variety because of these impacts. So that's why this lesson is so important. To help you keep track of your learning, we want you to take notes on this lesson. So you have a note-taking sheet that looks very much like this, but I'm actually gonna open up the file and show you 3.2 hip code note taking guide. It's available in your packet or on your teacher's Schoology website as both a PDF and as a Word file. The Word file looks like this. And if you are downloading that Word file and using a computer, please feel free to type directly in this document. If you have a print copy, you can also just make notes directly on here. Here's how I want you to use this worksheet. The first column, how humans impact the environment. Please make sure you define each of these letters. So like H stands for habitat destruction. And then there's a little bit of space underneath where you could summarize what does habitat destruction mean using key ideas from the PowerPoint slide. Example from the notes. 
This is where you're actually going to use the links on each PowerPoint to explore some additional articles, videos, infographics, information at your own pace. And you're going to make a few notes about things that you figure out about habitat destruction. This third column, relationship to orca population. I suggest that you either make notes if things just come to mind as you're working through, or come back to this at the end and make connections. How does habitat destruction relate to the orca population? Is habitat destruction impacting the orcas? And then the fourth column, other ideas and questions. Again, make notes along the way or come back to this at the end. Either way is fine. Let's get back to the PowerPoint. Okay, let's get into our first letter. The H in HIPCO stands for habitat destruction. So on your note-taking sheet, please write down that the H stands for habitat destruction and make a few notes about what that means. Don't write everything in this paragraph here, but maybe write a few key ideas to help you remember what habitat destruction is. So I'm gonna explain it to you here, and then you'll have an opportunity to click on these links and go through to learn more at your own pace. Habitat destruction is what happens when natural habitats are no longer able to support the species native to that habitat. This is due to human activities such as deforestation, that's when, for example, we're logging or clearing forests, dredging rivers, so that is like running something along the bottom of the river, um, changing the channel or the shape of the riverbed, and it disrupts that habitat. Bottom trawling in oceans and lakes. So that's a way of harvesting organisms from the bottom of an ocean or a lake and using things like nets or like metal tools, and it really disrupts that habitat at the bottom. Uh, urbanization. Urbanization is like cities. So this is um, the growth of cities, of areas covered by cement or pavement, and the um, expansion of cities. Like you might have heard of urban sprawl. So as things spread out further and further and take more ecosystem, more habitat. Another one is filling wetlands. Wetlands are ecosystems such as marshes, swamps, and bogs, and humans sometimes fill them, meaning that they are changing that ecosystem from a place that's a mixture of water and land to being more solid land. And sometimes this is done so that humans can build in those habitats. And then finally, harvesting fossil fuels like oil and natural gas. The process of harvesting these can disrupt habitats. This destruction of ecosystems leave them unable to support native species, leading to their displacement and or reduction of the biodiversity of the ecosystem. And we'll talk more about what that term biodiversity means, but again, this just means that we're reducing the number of types of species that can live there. All right, so here's where in each slide you're gonna make a choice. Either you can pause the video right now and go click on these links in the PowerPoint, or if you're using a packet, you can go through and um, explore the articles that have been provided, or you can let me go through this whole video, and then you can come back at the end and you can explore these on your own time. Either way is fine. At this point, I suggest that you make notes in the examples from notes area, um, and any ideas that pop up about orcas or questions that you have. So again, Either pause the video here or keep going and come back later. Okay, let's go to the second letter, invasive species. I is for invasive species. So please write down I, invasive species, and make a few notes about what that means. Invasive species are a species that spreads rapidly across large areas. More, an invasive species is not native to the specific location in which it is spreading and can change and can, excuse me, cause damage to the environment by reducing biodiversity and or damage to the human economy and or human health. So invasive species are species that are out of place. They are living somewhere where they did not originally evolve to live. And because of that, they may not have natural predators. They may not have um, the same competition for resources. And so often they grow too much or they take over areas. So here's some examples on the side. 
This is one you've probably seen in the Seattle area, English Ivy. It tends to grow up trees and cover hillsides, and it just chokes out everything else. This is another one we see a lot in Seattle, Himalayan blackberry. So while blackberries are delicious, these are not native to our area. And as you've seen, they, they just really take over areas. Some others that have been important are zebra mussels. These are these tiny little mussels that have been really impactful in the Great Lakes. Some other examples are the Burmese python in the Everglades. It's definitely not supposed to live there and it can outcompete other organisms and have a negative impact. Nutria in the American West and brown tree snakes in Guam are two other examples. At this point, make a choice, either pause the video, go explore these links, or come back to these links after the video. Third letter, P is for pollution. So there are two P's in HIPCO, this is the first P. Please note that it is for pollution. Pollution is the introduction and addition of contaminants such as chemicals into the natural environment that cause harmful and damaging effects leading to environmental change. Pollution can be caused by chemical substances, noise, heat, or even light. The polluting substances or pollutants can be caused by foreign substances or energies or by an excess of inappropriate amounts of naturally occurring substances. So that's a lot of text. So here's really what that means. Pollution is adding something into the environment that is harmful to organisms. So that could be chemicals. This is kind of the most common way that we tend to think about pollution. We think about images like this of dirty water or oil spilling into the environment, but there are other types of pollution. There's air pollution. This is another thing that we commonly think about. There's things like litter, but we can also have noise. So if you think about an organism like the orcas, think back to lesson two, who are the orcas? And you heard about the fact that orcas use echolocation. Noise can really interfere with the orca's ability to communicate with one another and to um, find prey and to know where they are based on echolocation. Heat. So if you can imagine this pipe here, if it was pouring in a substance that was warmer than the water out here in the environment, that would add heat to the environment, which could be um, impactful and potentially harmful to organisms that live there. Another one is light pollution. So think about living here in Seattle. It's never totally dark. If you compare that, if you've ever been out maybe camping or just visiting somewhere out away from the city, you probably notice that it's darker at night or that you can see more stars. That's because we have so much light pollution in the city and this impacts both humans, but also organisms. So those are all examples of ways that humans are impacting organisms through pollution. Again, at this point, either pause the video and go explore these links or wait till the end. Here's a little bit more about pollution. Um, I really want you to understand this because it's so relevant to orca whales. Pollution in the body, bodies of organisms includes two processes that are happening. One is called bioaccumulation. Bioaccumulation refers to the buildup of a chemical in the body of one organism. It does not require that that organism or animal be consumed. So for example, I have a certain toxin load from just being a human living on earth from eating food, from being in the environment, there are gonna be some chemicals that have built up in my body. Biomagnification refers to the buildup in multiple organisms. This requires movement up a food chain, so consumption or eating from one organism to another in order for this to occur. Let's look at some pictures to help us understand this. So bioaccumulation is when contaminants are building up in all these individuals here. These red dots represent contaminants like chemicals from pollution. And um, they're inside of every organism just from being in the environment. Biomagnification is a little different. So again, let's imagine that there's some contaminants. For example, PCBs are a chemical that are put off from urban environments. And Phytoplankton 
So those are the base of our food chain, which we're going to learn more about in lesson 5.1 on food webs. But phytoplankton are teeny tiny, um, they're very much like plants, and they're living in the ocean, and they absorb those chemicals in their environment. They are eaten by zooplankton. You might remember zooplankton or, or the copepod looking thing from SpongeBob. Um, he's called plankton. They eat phytoplankton. And those zooplankton are food for small fish like herring. Those herring are food for salmon. And those salmon are food for orcas. And guess what happens? In addition to that matter and energy transformation that you've learned so much about, we're having a movement of chemicals through that food chain. And all those chemicals build up throughout the food chain so that that orca ends up with all of the contaminants that were in the phytoplankton the zooplankton, the herring, the salmon, as it eats those salmon. That's what biomagnification is. So it's the difference between what's happening in an individual and what's happening across a food chain. All right, our next P is for population growth. So please make a note. Population growth in this case is referring to the growth of the human population. So this is one of those factors that feeds into all the other impacts on the environment. The human population is currently growing in what's called exponential growth. And if you look at this graph over here, this is showing a really kind of classic shape. It's called a J curve, where it's curving up and it's going faster and faster and faster. So if you can imagine, it's going up but then it's going steeper, 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 steeper. That's because the human population is growing faster and faster and faster as we have more people. So here's a way to think about that. The world population is the total population of humans currently living, and it's estimated to reach 7.8 billion people as of March 2020. It took about 200,000 years of human history for the world population to reach 1 billion. And in only 200 more years, we're up to 7 billion. So that gives you a sense of the fact that it's going faster and faster and faster. Here, you can see why that's so important. This gives you a sense of how um, populations are changing across the globe. But this is really the key. When we have more human population, that means more impact on the environment. We often are going to take up more space, and we're going to need more resources. So this image gives you a sense of that trend. At this point, please either pause the video and go explore these resources or come back to that after. All right, the C in HIPCO stands for climate change. Climate change is the average change in the weather over a long period of time, such as years and decades. So remember, weather is what's happening right now, like when you look outside the window and decide what to wear today. Climate is the long-term pattern of weather. So that tells you um, what kinds of things are in your wardrobe or what's the pattern of how warm or rainy it usually is here in the Seattle area and across the world. Overall, global climate change has led to an increase in average global temperatures over the past 100 years. Climate change has been caused by increase, increased amounts of greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide or CO2, in the atmosphere due to human activities such as the combustion of fossil fuels. So again, we've learned a lot about this in Biology B. You learned all about how um, burning of fossil fuels releases more CO2. That comes back to systems and scale in human energy systems. You talk, talked about that on the larger global scale. And you saw graphs similar to this one, where the average temperature is increasing over time. And you saw similar graphs, such as the Keeling curve, that showed that CO2 levels are also going up over time. And we're seeing that as a whole, we are um, seeing patterns of changes in climate because of those changes in chemicals such as CO2. So to explore this and the impact on habitats a little bit more, please pause the video and explore these resources or come back to those after. All right, biology students, last letter. O is for over-harvesting. Over-harvesting is sometimes also called over-exploitation. This is the harvesting of a renewable resource such as fisheries to the point of diminishing and decreasing returns. 
In general, over-harvesting is used to describe populations that are harvested at a rate that is unsustainable given the natural rate of mortality and capacity for reproduction. That's a little bit complicated, the text there, so let's break it down. Really, this is saying that we're taking more than that population can regenerate. For example, here on the top, this is showing um, timber or forestry operations. All of these are trees. So if we're taking trees faster than those trees can regrow in forests, that is over harvesting and that's considered unsustainable harvest. Likewise, fisheries are another thing that we hear about a lot in terms of over harvesting. If we are taking fish out of the ocean faster than those fish can grow um, and reproduce new fish, then we are taking too much. We are over harvesting beyond the capacity of that ecosystem. And when that happens, we can actually diminish the population and the overall health. To learn more about over harvesting, please pause the video and check out these links or come back to these in a few minutes after we're done. All right, now that we are through the main part about HIPCO, let's talk about how HIPCO causes decreased biodiversity. So first, let's figure out what is this whole biodiversity thing? Let's understand that a little bit more. Biodiversity is the number of different ecosystems, types of species, and the genetic diversity of the individuals in the region. So there's basically three components of biodiversity at different scales. So do we have a variety of ecosystems in our environment? So that could be, do we have forests and wetlands and deserts and all these different kinds of ecosystems? Within those ecosystems, do we have a large number of different types of species? Or is it decreased such that there's only a handful of species and we've lost some of those native species in those ecosystems? And then if we zoom in, on those populations of species within those ecosystems, is there genetic diversity? So thinking back to that, is there a variety? Like think in the human population, there's people with all different kinds of characteristics. That turns out to be a really good thing. It means that there's a variety of um, different types of people and those um, resources, those diversity resources, all contribute to that population. In the animal world, we see that really contributing because then you have um, organisms that might survive under different conditions. That means the species is more likely to survive in the long term. So an aspect of this that we tend to think about a lot is what's called species richness. Species richness refers to the number of different species in a region. The greater species rich richness, the more biodiverse the area is. So this is kind of the main way we talk about biodiversity. Do we have a large variety of species? All right. So the loss of biodiversity can actually be a cause of premature extinction. Extinction is when an organism is completely wiped out. So when that species is no longer alive on Earth. And unfortunately, that has happened more frequently lately. So something I want you to recognize is that all of these aspects of HIPCO can actually lead to this extinction of species, and that is human-caused extinction. So in fact, we are in the midst of a sixth mass extinction event. And you're going to learn more about this in the evolution unit, which we'll get to soon. But there have been mass extinction events over the entirety of Earth's history. This happens sometimes. There's big changes on the Earth way before humans were even around. And those changes have resulted in a large number of species dying off. You probably have thought about this the most with the dinosaurs. So like the dinosaurs, there was a mass extinction event there because of a big change on Earth. So what we're seeing is that right now, we're actually in the midst of another mass extinction event, meaning that species are dying quickly. And this is because of human activity. So let's look at this infographic for a little bit more. Uh, the current mass extinction event has already begun. 865 species that we know of have already gone extinct in the past 500 years. Almost 20,000 more species are threatened with extinction, meaning that they're feeling some of these impacts. They're not gone yet, but their populations are struggling. 
At this rate, our own mass extinction will rival the last one that wiped out the dinosaurs. So that's how big this is. And scientists have estimated that in the next five centuries, approximately 75% of the species inhabiting Earth will go extinct. So this tells us that by being aware of and making changes to these things in HIPCO, we can make a difference in terms of this mass extinction event. So to learn more about the mass extinction event that's happening and this human period in geologic history, again, you're going to learn more about geologic history in the evolution unit, but humans are having this incredible impact on the environment right now. And if you'd like to learn more about this, it's called the Anthropocene. You can actually click on this link after the video. So I want to show you here just what's happening in terms of extinctions. So in purple, this is the expected rate of extinction for each of these types of organisms. And what we see in blue is the actual observed rate of extinction since 1900. So you can see it's dramatically different, a much, much higher rate of extinction. And here are some examples of some of the species that we have lost that you might have heard of. The dodo bird, the Tasmanian wolf, and the passenger pigeon. These species are gone and we can't bring them back at this point. They have gone extinct. All right, it's time to wrap things up and check your understanding. So at this point, you should be able to identify a variety of impacts that humans have on ecosystems using the acronym HIPCO. So go back through your sheet. Number two, you should be able to describe how several of those impacts directly affect species such as orca whales. So please go through and fill out that third column on your note sheet if you have not done so already. Add in notes on how these impacts might affect our orca whales. And number three, you should be able to describe how human impacts on ecosystems can result in the extinction of species. We just went through some examples there. Also want to remind you, if you haven't yet gone through and gone through all of those PowerPoint links, and if you haven't added some notes in the last column, please make sure you go back and work on those things. After that whole worksheet is done, then I want you to get out your learning tracking tool and make a new entry titled 3.2 Human Impacts on the Environment. Summarize your learning in that space. We're getting closer to being able to answer our driving questions about orca whales. Thanks a lot for listening. I'll see you next time. Bye.